Podcast, Rock Dog Radio, Pets, People, Pop Culture. Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm live from Las Vegas, and today I'm talking about spay neuter, catios, and probiotics. So stay right there. Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs and the host of Vegas Rock Dog Radio. I'm live from Las Vegas today. Lots to talk about. In studio with me is James DeRico. Good morning, everyone. How are you? And we've got uh, Mr. Twix, who is on his back with his new toy called the Squirrel. And uh, he's hilarious. He's just a funny boy. And uh, Miss Thornton is relaxing after their morning walk. And that leads me into our temperatures here right now in Las Vegas. Crazy temperatures. We were out at 6 o'clock this morning, maybe for 40, 45 minutes. And uh, it was okay. I tested the pavement before we left the driveway. We went out to the park, and we spent most of our time on the grass. But uh, after 45 minutes or so, we had enough. I mean, there were only... There were a lot of people out with dogs, and luckily they were all the smart people that were out early, and they were staying mostly on the grass. And uh, I would say from now, which uh, our local time is 10 o'clock, I wouldn't be outside oh, now until forget it. Yeah, 9, y- 10, 12 o'clock at night now. Yeah, people have missed their window of opportunity. It's, uh, it's, it's wicked. And this particular week, we are going to see temperatures up to, I think they made it 116. So oh, that kind of leads me into how dangerous summer temperatures are. Uh, well, yeah, actually, it's not always summer. It's not always, you know, like we have the 100 degrees, 110s. It can be quite a low temperature. But if you decide you're going to leave your pets outside in a hot car or walk them, it's a whole different story. So one of my tips actually today is, and then Jim's going to give us some uh, some facts, some information. One of my tips is, of course, if you miss your window of opportunity in the, in the morning or late in the evening, your pets are going to have cabin fever, as <laughs> as they like to say. They go, they look, they at, go wild. They stare at us. It's they say, you know what? Seriously, you need to take us outside. They don't know it's too hot for them. I mean, I've had to teach my dogs to understand it's too hot, go inside. If I'm gardening, which I was yesterday, which was crazy, I know, but that was me, and I know what I was doing, but they would like to be with me, and I'd say, you know, it's too hot now, time to go inside, and they get up and they walk in. It's very cute, but dogs don't know that. They don't know it's too hot for them. My little one, Thornton, she'll lay out, she'll she'll bake like a little baked potato, she loves the warmth of the sun, but there she, there she would be panting and not know that she should go in. So that's why we are there. We are there guardians, as we like to say. And you've got to have their well-being first and foremost. So if you're in the house and it's boring, you know, you, you can do this with your kids. I mean, you do do this with your kids, but for, this is a really simple one. As you know, most Most pets love treats, and you can just hide them all over the house and play a hide-and-seek with them where you hide the treats and they seek out the treats to keep them a little bit stimulated. It is also a great time to do some training. Uh, It's not everyone's favorite thing to do, but it's probably one of the best things you can do, and it's time with your pet and you can bond with them. But you can go over some basic 
training uh, stuff really, really easy. Like we did this morning. Mr. Twix and I were playing, be very patient while I feed you blueberries. Oh, now here's the, here's the thing with blueberries. And I had to laugh because I was talking to our friend Lacey a couple of weeks ago about her dog. Uh, we talked about blueberries. <laughs> and I said, do you have to break the blueberries open <laughs> for them to eat them? She said, yes, yes. They won't take them whole. So I have to break them open. So same with ours. Quite funny. And and summer, it's, it, you've just got to try and give them a little bit of variety. Uh, we will be in for the most of, of, of this coming week because, as I say, it's going up to 116 degrees. I couldn't even... I couldn't even just walk down my little short driveway to get mail with bare feet. No, I'd have no soles left on my feet. That's how bad it is. I mean, and I did garden yesterday, and I think I paid for it today. But looks nice, though. It does look nice. I did it all by myself. That's good for you. You get a reward. Oh, good. I'm happy about that. Now, what I did come across, and we rarely... Starbucks reward. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that you already got anyway. <laughs> um. What I did see in my garden yesterday were millipedes. Millipedes. We rarely see those. So, uh, what do you know about millipedes, Jim, and they're pets? Well, uh, they're fast. They're creepy. They are poisonous. I don't know what their habitat is because I haven't. I don't know either. Done because any check, but I, you know, they're. Uh, thank goodness we have lizards and birds that come to our yard because I'm sure they come and take care of them. But. Nonetheless, we need to probably do something to make sure that uh, we get those poisonous little critters yeah, out we, of the backyard. Yeah, we are very unique in the fact that we don't have a bug service. This is not common for Vegas at all. We used to have a bug service. <laughs> we had more bugs when we had the bug service. No joke. So we chose not to have the guy show up anymore because we have no idea what the heck was he, was he spraying sugar water every i don't know what was going on but it was not effective so we decided we would do our own bug service but we found an organic i wish i could remember the name of it but it's organic you can read every ingredient on there it's a it's a food-based type bug repellent and so we got that but in all honesty we probably if the, if this we spray once a year, yeah, there's we can make a homemade concoction. Oh yeah, well. there are yeah there are quite a few a few recipes that you can use because I use some of them if I get those, and I don't know what it is that actually eats the leaves, but they will eat a perfect circle out of your leaves, and I do a mixture of uh, washing up liquid, water, and I want to say I put vinegar in there. White, just normal white vinegar that you would clean with in a, in a spray bottle, and I spray that on my plants. Mm. Not harmful to my dogs. Not that they're going to go licking leaves on my plants, but some pets do eat plants. And I spray that. Done. Oh, no, I know. It, I, uh, what I put in there as well is, um, what do they call it? Baking soda. It's a very simple, simple rem remedy. So this is what we'll be doing this weekend since we saw some creep, creepy things. <laughs> I don't want anything. I don't want my dogs to eat anything, touch anything. It's not good for them. Same goes with your garden. So say I've been gardening. A lot of people are gardening this time of year. Be aware of the type of plants you put in your gardens in the desert. Be very careful of the sago palm tree. Very dangerous to your pet. Every single bit of that tree, that palm tree, is dangerous. Thankfully, Home Depot, a oh, little plug for them, I've been putting signs on certain plants saying not good for pets, which I'm thrilled to see that. Oh, they're doing that in the stores? Yeah. So you wouldn't know otherwise, seriously, unless you are like us <laughs> and you decide you're going to research everything based on your pets. You wouldn't know. You'd have no clue, probably, that that was, and it's a common common palm tree, that how dangerous it is. Uh, so, there you go. Oh, so we're back to summer. So we're back to summer. So keep them entertained at home. Do a little bit of training. Hey, if, hey, take the opportunity just to hang out. Maybe a little Netflix. Netflix, relax, cuddle up with your pets. Because this sun is brutal, absolutely brutal. So what are they... Um, the with the temperature, what's the temperature chart, Jim? If you, leave, for example, you leave a dog in a car, uh, here's a thing too. Here's a thing too. Here's a thing too. 
I see it all the time. Make sure you've got adequate water and shade for your pets. No, 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 no. Not here. Not here. Did you know this? That our temperatures, official temperatures, come from McCarran Airport. They are taken in the shade. They're not taken in the direct sun because they have to get a constant temperature, one that is reliable, and it's in a special kind of structure that they have so that the wind can't blow in and out either, changing the temperatures. want to be able to give you a fairly accurate accurate temperature, and it's still in the shade. So when they say 116 in the shade, guess what? <laughs> it's so much more. It's, it's like the crust of the, the, the sun outside in the actual sun itself. Don't leave them outside, period. Just don't leave them outside. That's it. It's too dangerous. No amount of shade or water is going to make one little bit of difference with those kind of temperatures. And we're talking about cars as well. I was hoping to be able to tell my Nomvardens, and now this is a, there are law, different laws throughout the states and the world when it comes to leaving pets in hot cars. Ours has yet to pass. We're waiting. We're waiting for it to pass. As as in, you cannot. You can break a window. Not yet, though. Although we do have a law, you can't leave your pets in the, in the car. And extreme temperatures, not just the heat, that can be extreme cold as well. If you hear weird noises in the background, that's Mr. Twix chewing on that squirrel toy. <laughs> He's happy, though. And we're a pet show, so sometimes you get pet noises. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's doing it extra loud now. <laughs> Just to prove a point, he's, uh, he's there, rolling around on his back with his big giant squirrel, which I found his hiding place yesterday. He's doing it on purpose. He hi- he's got two, and he's, he hides them behind the cushion. It's cute when he goes to get them, and don't catch his eye when he's retrieving one because he's going to have to find a new hiding place if he catches you watching. Yeah, so we did not get the, the law that allows us to, to break a window in Nevada. And there is no good reason, there is no good reason to leave your pet in a car. No reason at all that I can think of. Not a one. So leave them at home, leave them where they can be comfortable. Because I think that it's more than just about the temperature. It really is. It's about how they feel about being left in a car. M- my two would be crying. They would be distraught. I don't want to do that to my dogs and I don't want to do that to them panicking in a car that's hot. I never do that. So, Jim, give us the, the lowdown on the temperatures. Well, I'm, I'm looking at uh, a really good source right now is heatkills.org. But uh, they've got different charts up from different organizations about uh, car temperature, pet safety. You know, it's children, elderly pets. You know, people yes. do it all the time. But uh, on veterinaryclinic.com, there's a car temperature pet safety chart that's really good. And the question is, how long does it take for a car to get hot? So I'm going to give you the reference here. If the outside temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, within 10 minutes, it will rise to 89. Mm. Within 30 minutes, it will rise to 104. Now that's at 70 degrees outside temperature. Which we will not see 70 degrees until November. This chart <laughs> only goes up to outside temperature at 95 degrees. Oh, gosh. So, you don't even so the touch outside, our temps. If the outside temperature is 95 degrees, in 10 minutes, the inside of the car is going to be 114. There you go. And in 30 minutes, it's going to be 130. Oh. And that's at 95 degrees outside temperature. There's some quotes here. Um, you know, there's a lot of research uh, university studies. San Francisco State University did a lot of research into the uh, – Car temperature and, and uh, timetables for car temperature rising. It's dreadful, isn't it? Uh, Absolutely I'm dreadful. Trying to find some of the good ones here as I'm, as I'm And you've got to understand that pets cool themselves differently than we do. <coughs> Excuse me. General Motors <coughs> did a study. Oh, they did. Yep, 80 degrees outside, uh, elapsed time of 40 minutes, 118 degrees inside the car. You just can't do this to your pets, so your the kids. The manufacturers are getting involved. You just can't. You can't do this to, to anybody, actually, to anybody. Whether it's got four legs, two legs, feathers, you just cannot do this. It is so dangerous. W- you, it, you can end up with a dead dog. You can end up with a dog that's got brain damage. You c- um, all manner of nightmare problems. Nightmare problems. I was just saying to Jim the other day, I kind of hate this time of year because, well, I, I think I've, I I disliked summer more and more each year the longer I've lived here, to be honest with you. I do miss my seasons. But I also am fed up with calling the police 
over people leaving their pets in the hot cars. Well, I'm, get, I'm get sick this of it. One. Just sick of it. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, when the temperatures outside range from 80 to 100, the temperatures inside a car parked in direct sunlight can quickly climb to between 130 and 172. Oh, my gosh. That's shocking. That's Centers for Disease Control. So, that's I mean, they're shocking. they're talking about it as it relates to children and humans. That is shocking. Yeah, I just have a hard time this time of year because if it's not telling someone, bring your pets inside, if it's not saying, you know, don't leave your pets in a hot car, it's also, why are you walking your pets on this hot ground? It is horrifically hot. And also, think about this. We have fake grass, and a lot of a lot of homes do here, a lot. That gets hotter. Oh, it's that's wicked as well. Absolutely wicked. I don't know if you can get the fake grass that's not hot. I mean, hello, it's plastic. I don't know. We have we, Ours is old. And we've had ours a long time, so I don't know if technology has changed. But underneath is a crushed marble, so you can imagine how hot that gets. And, and they do that so that you can hose it and drain it through. But, ooh, gosh, you do not. You do not. Uh, and the funny thing is, I don't know why there's a disconnect with people. I just don't understand the disconnect. I don't know if it's a disconnect or it's just a selfishness. I don't know. We never seem to call the police in winter for leaving pets in hot car in, in their cold cars, extreme temps, do we? No. I never see anybody take... It, it's almost like, it's really hot, people. Oh, yay, I'll take my, my dog out with me. Really? Come on. The only time I recommend you take them out in the car... Yeah, it's one, you've got the car running before you put your pets in there and that it's cool inside. And that the only thing that you do with your pet in the car is that you go through the drive through at Starbucks and you go and pick them up a little puppuccino, give them a change of scenery and then bring them home. That's, I, to me, I think that's the, <laughs> the only good reason. It, uh, if you're going to do vet visits, here's, an, uh, here's a point too. Try and do your vet visits early in the morning so that it's not as hot because trying to cool your vehicles down is brutal. And you don't want your, your pets to overheat while your car tries to cool down on the way to the vet. So think about those things as well. But, yeah, those statistics are scary, aren't they, Jim? Yeah. Well, before we, take, before we take a break, if you are uh, new to the show and you want to connect with us on the Internet, or if you are one of our regular listeners, well, first of all, thank you for being here. But we are in other places on the Internet. Our main website is VegasRockDogRadio.com. You'll find us pop up on Periscope once in a while. Facebook, of course, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram. Our blog is the rockandrolldog.com. We do have an app, and you'll go to yap.us. Download the free app. Download Vegas Rock Dog Radio onto your app. You'll find us on iTunes, and you'll find us on iHeartRadio. And the new, well, oh yeah, this is the good news. We got on the SiriusXM app called Spoke, and every other po- podcasting platform that you can find and all you do is you look for vegas rock dog or vegas rock dog radio well let's take a quick break because after this break we're going to talk about catios <laughs> i know you're looking at me you have no idea what the heck that is but we're going to talk about catios you're listening to vegas rock dog radio with me sam your host the queen of rock and roll dogs we'll be right back vegas rock dog radio pets people pop culture At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We'd love to see their smiling faces. Our website, carlsjunioroflasvegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers too, with free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas.com. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. 
Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And Jim's with me today. And Thornton, Mr. Twix, Miss Galaxy is up in heaven, probably saying, get it together. <laughs> you know, I was, it was funny when you were mentioning Mr. Twix in his new hiding spot for a squirrel. That was what Galaxy used to do I when know. she would hide things. I know. And if she would catch you out of the corner of her eye, yes, knowing where she was hiding something, she would get very upset with I you. I thought about that yesterday. She That was her spot. He's never hidden things. And he, all of a sudden, he started to use her little hiding place. Yeah, I did think about that yesterday. He's a little comic, I have to tell you. And it's funny when we go to bed and I say, oh, where's your squirrel? And he looks at me and, hmm. Yeah, where is it? And he goes to find it and brings it to bed. And then he makes that noise all night, chomping down on, <laughs> on a squirrel. Oh, now, if you do, this is one of those, I'm not going to say the brand, but it's one of those big rubber toys. You can put treats in them. Please make sure that you have the newer ones that has a hole in both sides. So that you don't get a suction effect. So you don't get a suction effect. You do not want your pets to to suction their tongues into these toys it is dreadful what can happen to your pets so make sure they have a big hole in the back if you feel the hole is not big enough make it big enough in the very very back so the air can flow through it very very important okay let's talk about catios i can't wait (laughs) i have no clue why did you keep this from me Oh, I do. I do love a bit of a a bit of a secret. Okay, cat owners everywhere are building catios in their backyards, and I've seen some amazing photographs of these catios. And here's the interesting thing: I think if you're listening, if you're a listener from England, you're probably going to go, "Why? Why do they need a catio?" There are very distinct differences between people who have cats in different countries. For example, in England, lots of people have indoor, outdoor cats. Lots of people. It's common. Here, I, I don't think I rarely see an, an, an indoor, outdoor cat. Generally, if you, you s- don't want an outdoor cat here, though. Too many predators. Too much uh, danger outside. Plus the heat, right? Well, not no, not necessarily here. No. Yeah, but outdoor, I don't think you're... In the United States, it is not that common for people to have indoor, outdoor cats. Right, because I don't think it's, I don't think you're really allowed to have an outdoor pet. Well, but the, the, my point being, I was just saying how different it is from one country to the next. For example, Germany, when in England too, people don't use crates that much. Here, it's like a given. So I'm just saying there's a difference and that's why... For example, if my sister was listening right now, although she might, you know, she might want a catio because she's just got a, a, a new rescued cat, who she's not sure. Well, she used to be feral. She just to make sure she comes back <laughs> more than anything. But the catios are are becoming very popular here, which is basically, what do they call those things they have in Florida over the swimming pools that attach oh, to like the house? Oh, like the little, the little. Um Net, you know, like kind it's of like screen room. Like, yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like a screen room, but an ex, an extension, and it can be literally you you. I'm having trouble with my words today. Uh, enclose it in. You can actually enclose in your existing patio, so that of course your cat has somewhere an enclosure. Yeah, but it's 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 done with like a mesh, so there's they can feel like they're out in the fresh air. Yeah, they're it's like a sunroom, like a screen sunroom or a. Sc- yeah, n- not, but it's not with glass or anything like that. These are specifically for cats so that they can feel the outdoor air. And some people will do a massive extension on their own patio and just close it in, close it in for them and their cats, and they feel like they're sat out in the fresh air. Some of them at, uh, you can build off an existing window, yeah? Okay. Some can build off an existing window. Some people uh, have, have gone really crazy with some of their designs, and I'll, I'll put this link up for you to see what these catios are. But basically, it's it's creating the outdoors in a safe environment for your cats. Yeah, because I would say in Florida, I wouldn't want my cat outdoor either because of predators. Well, yeah, yeah. depending on where you are in the country, it can be, <laughs> it can be a bit of a concern, to say the least. And um, they say it's no secret that pet owners will go above and beyond 
their, uh, for their pets, which I think most people do listen to this show, actually. Uh, but we have to admit the Catio is taking annual luxury to a whole new level. And while the trend might seem totally extra, we have to say the idea is pretty great. I would agree. The idea is that the patio for cats gives your feline access to the great outdoors, but gives you peace of mind for their safety. Maybe they're an indoor cat you want to keep safe, or perhaps they often stray too far from home. Maybe you're just concerned about surrounding wildlife. Whatever the reason, a catio is a great solution to your concerns about your cat being outside. The uh, catio range in size, of course, like I said, some, some extend just outside of the window. Some people build the whole high, what do they call it, like walkways, cat, the, cat walks. Cat walks. <laughs> cat walks, so it's still very stimulating for them as well. And uh, as I say, some attach to windows, some they look a little bit like a window box, yeah, while others are quite large and attach right to the side of the home. Some are even entire patio enclosures, and your cat can enjoy, you and your cat can enjoy those together. Uh, some of the trends, this would be me, this would be me. I would just wouldn't have any old catio. <laughs> of course, there's a classic one, kind of plain. There's one that they did, it was called a man cave. So it was where the, the guy and his cat got to be, so it was all sp- sports themed <laughs> uh, there was uh, a wildlife window watcher one uh the there was a really pretty uh, window box uh, there was an old-fashioned patio transformation it looked like a patio they'd probably not used much so they converted it uh there's the cat gazebo which i think would be very cool do cats got, know that they're having this enhanced environment well they've got to feel happy because they feel outside and it's it's another level of stimulation for them as well isn't it because cats, yeah, cats don't go for walks, do they? Not, not typically, no. Although I have seen people put their cats on leashes, hmm. on harnesses, actually. I haven't seen that. There's the rainbow cabana that that was amazing. I'm going to put the the link up for this. And then there was a hidden catio, which was like a gazebo that was enclosed in and just in the most gorgeous garden. I mean, just gorgeous, but oh. it had all this amazing lush. What's the word? Vegetation. Did the cat have like a tunnel to get from the house to the gazebo? Yes, a lot of them are like that. They have a a, a old catwalk, catwalk, yeah, all Mm. enclosed in. I think it's fantastic. Hey, if it makes your cat happy and you you've got the means to do that, and then you want to be creative with it, why not? But yeah, from country to country, it's very different how people live with their animals. Mm. Siobhan's cats used to be indoor outdoor. Now her newest cat. Is was a feral cat, great great lady with a one of the re, uh, shelters rescues in back in Sheffield, my hometown, and is she she works with the cats and then if she deems that they can be adopted, she adopts an out. And so Siobhan's having a hard time though believing that that uh, feisty two socks, <laughs> that's her name, is feral because there was no transition period. She just came home and kicked back. <laughs> well, what if a feral cat adopts your house and starts living in your yard? Does that become your cat automatically, or who's responsible then if you start feeding it? Does oh well, for example, here in 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 Vegas, and I'm not sure if it's passed in Henderson yet, but you are allowed to have a cat colony. You are allowed to have a cat colony. So I've often had people come up to me, kind of whisper, "What can I do? I've got this cat colony." Well, you don't have to whisper about it. You register it. And when you register it, you're making a commitment. It becomes your cat then? I, your colony or becomes... Or your cats? Yeah, the colony becomes yours. But you have to... You commit by registering this colony, you commit to food, water, shade. Yeah? Mm. And if they do... Uh, and they have to be uh, fixed. So th- and, and that's part of the TNR program. So if you've got a colony, and you know, you've got... You, know, you might have a cat that shows up and joins the rest of them, but they've not had they've not been fixed and then you would call c5 here in vegas and they would come they do a uh, tnr program which is trap neuter spay release them they come and pick them up i think they take them for a week i think they, they they take them for the week to fix them and they also give them vaccinations and then they bring them back to you and their ear will be tipped we've talked about ear tipping before which top of the ears snipped off now at first i thought to myself this is horrible they tried different methods, but this was a, a a way to instantly recognize a cat that had been fixed. So if you saw the ear had been tipped, 
we didn't have to worry about it, it would have been vaccinated as well. And it also saved on time and resources. He said often, you know, Keith over at C5, they don't want to catch cats and then find that, you know, oh, they've already been fixed. You go through all this, sh- the cat gets stressed and then all the effort to catch a cat yeah. that's already been caught. But th- what, they they can see it with binoculars or something? You can see it with your own eyes. Yeah, you see a cat. My eyes might not be that good. Well, maybe, maybe no, maybe not for you. <laughs> but, th- but that's how they do it. And so, um, where was it going with this? Oh, cat colonies, feral cats coming into your yard. So there you go. So that's the information on that. But you'd have to check in your city what the ordinance is for feral cats and colonies. The great thing is that Keith had built a relationship with our city shelter so that if these feral cats did come in with the ear tipped, they would contact him and say, hey, this cat belonged to one of your people, and and they would circulate that information, and they would come and pick up their cat. Now, if you do come across a feral cat, leave it. If it's been tipped and everything, leave it. Do not take it to the shelter. It is going to get euthanized. Yes, this week alone, the kitten lady. We've talked about kitten lady. We want to bring her on, on the show, actually. So the the shelters don't recognize the cats that have been neutered and tipped ears, or they don't care. Or <laughs> well, let's not go down that path. That's a whole other show. <laughs> that's a whole other show. But my point being, if you see a cat that's been, I don't know why I'm, I do know why I'm losing my voice actually. Well, why? Because I was outside in the desert most of the day yesterday doing my gardening. I think I sucked in half of the desert dust. If you come across a cat that's been tipped, and that's what, look for that tip on the ear and leave it be. Leave it be. Do not take it to the shelter because they go, oh, feral cat. And uh, we all know how that can end up. Instead, just let them live out in the natural environment, knowing that they've actually been taken care of. So that's a very interesting thing. There you go. But yeah, check in your city, see what your ordinance is. You may not have to (laughs) look after these these cats under the cloak of darkness because <laughs> that's what a lot of people do they kind of you know do it uh, do it when it gets dark and look after them so there you go that's my little cat my uncle sam used to take care of all the cats he, he, oh, he did 20 or 30 cats in his backyard sometimes. i didn't know that kittens he used to make yeah he had all kind he had cats since i can remember oh i had no idea about that yeah my aunt nadine before she passed though she was a dog person she had little uh Boston Terriers, and uh, they're cute dogs, aren't and, they? But yeah, my uncle Sam always took care of the wild cats, and you know he lived in a little country town in Pennsylvania, so you know he made all kinds of accommodations. They lived in his shed, you know, where he kept all his junk and his antiques and stuff. And uh, he, he was a character, wasn't he, Jim? Yeah, yeah, he took care of them though. Let's talk about telepathic pets. I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about, I didn't mention it, but I do think pets are telepathic i really do well you think that thornton definitely is telepathic she knows the difference between when i put on black socks to go play a gig and when i put on my little workout socks to go for a -A w-a-l-k oh she can spell as well by the way (laughs) she'll perk up if i said the word but even she knows how to spell now as well (laughs) <laughs> she does. Telepathic Pets is a biologist. He's British, actually. Rupert Sheldrake. He discusses morphogenic fields. No, morphogenetic fields and the experiments he has run to prove telepathy between humans and telepathy between humans and animals. Uh, I, you know, I am a big believer in telepathy anyway. I am a twin. My twin and I, we know what's going on with each other, without speaking to each other, we just know. And we've had some very, very interesting incidents. For example, well, as, as little kids, our sisters, our older sisters, would put us in separate rooms, pen and paper, and say, draw something. We, they wouldn't tell us what to draw, and then we'd fold up the papers, and then they'd bring it together and open them up with the exact same drawings. Creepy. It's not creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> it's amazing. And <laughs> creepy. We would buy like the two girls in The Shining. Yeah, I, yeah, I, we do relate to them actually. <laughs> we also, well, you know, you've been on the receiving end of this. We, without discussing, we buy exactly the same gifts for other people. 
and Jim got two identical watches one year. Uh, a lot of the stuff exactly the same. So I said, oh, maybe we should start discussing that you know, before we start buying gifts. Or we were all on family vacation, staying in a big suite, all in one big, huge room in New Orleans, and the two of them were sleeping and talking to each other in their sleep. Yes, we were. Yeah, we did the sleep talking together while we're asleep. Isn't that and you were creepy? You were there. Yeah, we, <laughs> we stayed in a very See, creepy. We we stayed in a very large suite in New Orleans. Wasn't that fabulous, Jim? So the whole family stayed in this suite. And yes, yeah, Serena and I started to have a, a good old chit chat while we were asleep. Our grandma is the one that brought brought the attention to that. She used to come over and stay at the house and stay in our room. And she'd, she'd get annoyed because we were talking. She thought we were awake, but we were actually asleep and talking. And and then that night was the epic sleepwalking episode of mine where I decided I was going to leave the hotel with a big trash can. <laughs> yeah, and then your niece <laughs> got in on the act too with all that creepiness. Which w- which one? When she had when she was sat in her stroller with meat from the meal. Oh my gosh, this is funny. This is nothing to do with telepathy. Nothing to do with sleepwalking. I think it does. It's still it's still creepy. No, it's hilarious though. She was little, maybe maybe I don't know. 18 months, two years old. We went to Memphis. We used to live in Nashville, so we went to see Elvis's birthplace and see the mansion. And then after, we went for barbecue at the famous Rendezvous Barbecue, which is where Elvis used to get his barbecue from. And we had this incredible barbecue, which seems really weird saying that. Now I'm a vegetarian. That seems really weird. But anyway, we got back to the hotel, and we decided we needed to, you know, we're gonna. Un- I'm going to undress her and... <laughs> So put your arms up and we pull her little top off and she lifted her chin up and from under her chin fell the biggest piece of meat you've ever seen. <laughs> Creepy. It was, really, it was funny though. It was really funny. She was storing a chunk of barbecue meat under her chin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she also did something else when you took a swim in, didn't she? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> She left a treat. <laughs> she did. She's going to kill us. Don't mention the name. Have you already mentioned the name? No, no don't. <laughs> She'll kill us because she's now 21. She, <laughs> she's probably sick of us talking about those stories. You know how you get older and the family just keep repeating those embarrassing stories. She's probably sick of it. But <laughs> Big chunk of meat under a chin. Never laughed so much in my life. Absolutely hilarious. Oh, gosh. So back to telepathy. <laughs> he explains that everything in nature has a morphogenetic field, an invisible pattern in space that contains the collective memory of that species. Ooh, that seemed rather deep for me. And that these fields are the organization, organizing principles that apply to that species. That's all I found in the article. There's actually a TED Talk about it, and I think it got banned. I think it, the TED Talk got banned. Really? Because I think it kind of turned people's thoughts, science, science, scientists' thoughts on its head a little bit. So it seems quite controversial. Awesome. But I do believe, uh, what di- I did watch on this this little video clip was it, dogs, they did a, an experiment with a dog, and I think it was over 100 times they did the video with the same dog, but in different scenarios. And basically it was the the the, the pet parent, who was at work, for example, they would sense and change their behavior something like five minutes before the person would leave work, almost like a, a pr- how you you know you prepare to leave work and you get your stuff yeah. together, and that's when the dogs would then change their behavior, start making their way towards the window to wait for them to come back. Wow! And they did it at various times. They did it in various situations where they let the dog go to the sister's house. So they ch- they changed up the scenario, not so much, oh, every day the routine, the time. They changed it up, and over 100 videos of this one dog, and this dog, five minutes before the person chose to leave work and make their way home, would start preparing for them to come home. Wow. Well, as you know... Well, they're, when, if I'm home by myself with the dogs and you're not home, you know, they get antsy well, sometimes. Uh, well, well, often they, I've said to you... They know the sound of your car. They have yes. great recognition. But I've often said to you, just in your mind, say, let's go for a walk. And just say it in your mind, and you've done that, and they've reacted. 
stand on my chest and look straight in my face. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. There's a lot of like this. Like you thought it. Stared you at thought it, so we have to go So we now. have to go, yeah. Oh, funny. And of course, yeah, they pick up on your body language. They're observers. And they do know what you're up to. Don't try and hide it. They know. They're so smart. I'm going to put the link up for the TED Talk because it's actually still up there, even though uh, it was banned for a while. I think it's in different places where you can see it. Very, very interesting. Here's another interesting story. Elderly pit Pitbull gets contact lenses, and now the dog just can't stop looking at itself in the mirror. You mean like the when they surgically implant them, like cataract lenses? Not surgically, ones that you would put in yourself. Really? Yeah. It's a really cute video, too. The dog just sits there while they put them in, and... They said this way, it is not difficult. And I did, I watched the video. The dog's great. Just let them plop plop them in his eyes. And um, the dog's happy because they can see. Wow. Because you see those changes. When when your dogs start to lose hearing and their vision, you will start to see changes in them. You'll see confidence change. You'll see uh, behavioral changes. And there's nothing more frustrating. I said to Jim, I'm sick of my eyes being broken. I can't see anything really without my my glasses. It's very frustrating, and and so can you imagine that you're you're a pet and you don't know that your vision's gone, your hearing's going, and things are not quite the same. So I thought that was brilliant because we talked about hearing aids, didn't we? Yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks ago. They're working on. They're getting it kind of dialed in. And so the dog's name is Gremlin, and uh, they said not only is this dog thrived, but uh, survived, but he's thrived through a lot. And uh, she was thought to be about four years old when she was rescued from a life of dog fighting. Ugh. And she got adopted some seven years ago. Gremlin's lived through a whole host of serious health problems since. She's had cancer, irritable bowel syndrome, a blood disease called Babesia. I mean, one of those is enough to deal with, let alone all of them. And they said this sweet, goofy, funny, loving girl also became a certified therapy dog and inspired her human parents, Chris and uh, Marisa Hughes, to dedicate themselves to rescuing sick and elderly pups. Pups. So I'm so glad that she gets to see properly and, and see herself in the mirror. She deserves it. Isn't that great? Yeah. I love that. You well, know, speaking of, you, you mentioned that it was a pit bull uh, for the uh, contact lenses. And I just read somewhere this week, and I can't recall exactly where it is, but I, I know a few weeks ago we mentioned the police department in Ohio they just certified the first shelter death row pit bull as a police dog, an official police dog. Really? But now I think there's a, several dogs now that I read an article about, at least six pit bulls now that have become service dogs in uh, law enforcement around the country. So they're changing the pers- the police departments the are helping change the viewpoint. That's right. I think that's very important. And I, I get really tired of people vilifying this this great breed of dogs. It's terrible. It's 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 irresponsible. We see it all the time in the media. It's it, it, it just for the sake of doing it now, I think. That's how I feel. I, I'm not that imp- – I, I just think it's not that impactful. I just think it's more damaging uh, and that's great that then, you know, they're changing the optics. Optics are important. And if they're in the police force, fantastic. If they're therapy dogs, fantastic. Can't beat that, can you? I mean, I, I th- think it's terrible that we have to go to these extremes to show that these dogs are great dogs. I think it's it, it's it's terrible. And I, we have friends who have, have pit bulls and, and, you know, the staffies, and, and, and they're up against all kinds of discrimination. And people are rude and horrible to them because of their Can't dog. Can't run apartments. No, it's terrible. They they go wa- they walk and people go on the other side of the road. It's it's just really really bad. Sick people say rude things to them. They get that dog away from my kid. It's just it's terrible. It is terrible, and and you will you do feel sorry for for the breed. Um, and here's the th- here's the thing. Most people have probably never met met a staffy. Probably never met one. So where did they get this information from? Mm. How, how are they so fearful that they never even met one of the dogs? They get it from the media. There's a responsibility comes along with that kind of stuff, and um, that's quite. It's just quite upsetting, really, isn't it? Yes. Oh, we were asleep. No, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to uh, ask for an acknowledgement at the end of that sentence, so I was not prepared. Wow. I was exhaling. It's just as well I did because now I've woken him up. So no, s- since that wasn't <laughs> the case at all. <laughs> since we've done that, let's take a quick break. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the Queen of Rock and Roll Dogs, and we'll be right back. Vegas Rock Dog Radio Pets, people, pop culture 
Welcome to Barking Dog Self-Wash and Grooming, your one-stop shop for all your pet's needs. We offer premium natural pet foods, full-service grooming, and an on-site bakery and boutique. You can choose to self-wash your dog or schedule a luxury pampering with our professional groomers. Visit our cool cat section offering feline food, toys, bedding, and litter, while the adventurous dog department has everything you need for your outdoor activities. And don't forget Cody's Healing Garden, featuring flower, aromatherapy, and herbal remedies for pets. Find us at www.barkingdogslv.com and we look forward to seeing you in our neighborhood. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. And uh, we're back on the show right now. And the lady is uh, conducting a little bit of last minute research here on her next topic of discussion for the show. So I have become your uh, lead in <laughs> intro guy after the commercial. That was actually a first for me to bring a segment back in. Uh, because, you know, I'm usually back here at the show working the computer, working the mixer trying to optimize the microphones. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things as I'm talking. It's like chewing gum and patting my belly at the same time. And <laughs> I, I get a little confused because, you know, my ears may be concentrating on something and then... Uh, and then he zones and, out. And then she <laughs> thinks I'm zoning out, but I'm actually doing some things to, you know, optimize uh, our equipment and make sure that we get the best uh, print and recording that we get. So that's just a little bit of my... That's my pain. That's how I live the show sometimes. I live in two worlds, the technical world here, and then have to pay attention to the host world and respond. And so sometimes I just get a little disconnect. I see. Uh, I, yeah, I've actually seen him asleep in the show. No, it's not sleeping at I all. I have seen if it. I'm lis- <laughs> if I'm listening, if I'm really <laughs> listening to the mix, I may appear like I'm zoned out. It's it's just the way I listen in. So <laughs> it's not. You're just making you're making up your own assumptions now. So I will have to dispute that. Jim does fall asleep in some very random places. Remember that time you fell asleep, stood up in the vet? office well uh, sometimes i just am tired and i have energy issues but yeah i could fall i fell asleep riding a bicycle when riding a bicycle (laughs) while riding a bicycle did you fall off no but i was zoned out (laughs) i don't know how far i went but i was definitely i definitely dozed while riding (laughs) it was on the road it wasn't on a trail remember our photo fundraiser you fell asleep Mm. there was a million dogs coming in and out to get photos we we had mexican food Yes, we did. And I looked around him. There he's asleep. He has no clue what's going on around him. All kinds of dogs right. <laughs> jumping around, having photos taken. No clue. <laughs> I sometimes have to take rest wherever I can get it. Oh, gosh. That's how I do it. That's how I roll. Sometimes you just get it. Well, let's tell you how I'm, how I'm, how I'm going to roll with this next topic. Yeah, you have misspeakings all the time. Yeah. You know. You, you know, what do they call them? Malfunctions? <laughs> As you know, we're big fans of Dr. Karen Becker. She's an integrative, holistic veterinarian. If you haven't seen something of hers online, maybe you were sleeping. <laughs> She's everywhere. She's, oh gosh, her knowledge is is so extensive. She comes from a, a wildlife rehab background as well. And she started very, very young, I think at 13 years old. And there was a, a lady who was a renowned wildlife rehabilitator. And she'd reached out to her one summer and said, I'd, how, I'd, I'd like to do this. I want to do this kind of work and I love animals. And she invited her to come and stay for the summer. And she was, I think, 13 or 14. And she'd learned a great deal about rehabbing birds, eagles, you name it. So her 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 knowledge spans beyond just domesticated animals, and she's right on on the the cusp. The well, the, yeah. Well, she's she's the leading edge. She's, she's leading. She's leading. She's researching. She pioneering. Pump, she's pumping out so much information. It's fantastic. I, I follow her, Rodney Habib who she does a lot of things with. He is the, gosh, he is huge around the world when it comes to nutrition for your pets. Huge, absolutely huge. They work a lot together. They're actually coming out with a... When was Rodney on our show last? He wasn't. I have um, have, uh, a contact. Actually, I did meet him and Karen, actually, last year. 
and I was, there's a very special... I thought special we interviewed him about a year ago. No, there's a very special way in which I get to communicate with him. But I can't tell anybody because I would have to kill you. It's a very Kill me? No, it's a very special... Or the audience. Way. It's a very special way in which I have to communicate with him because he gets tens of thousands of emails a week. Tens of thousands of emails a week. So... How do you get an email through to him? Ha-ha, I know, and I can't tell. But we are going to have Rodney on the show, and we're also going to have Dr. Karen Becker, who's a big, big fan. And she's... Yeah, I, you know what I like about her? How through research and new information that she'll say, hmm, I'm changing my mind on this because this has just come out, or we've just found this out. So I do like that about her, but here we go. So Dr. Karen Becker... And we do have permission to, to do this entire article. There is a growing body of evidence, including new research on German shepherds that indicates spaying or neutering in particular as it relates to large breed dogs desexed early in life significantly increases the risk of serious health problems. You will have heard that myth. Oh, it prevents, you know, spay and neuter prevents cancer. No, it's a myth. It's an absolute myth. And I don't know how that got started. For female Rottweilers, ovary removal significantly increases the risk for a major fatal disease. Wow. Yes. In 2009, Gerald P. Murphy Cancer Foundation study found a correlation between the age at which female Rottweilers are spayed and their lifespan. I'm all about lifespan, trust me. The study compared female Rotties who lived to be 13 or older with a group who lived the expected lifespan of about nine years. Big difference there. That's a that's a third more. Yeah, it's a lot of years. It's a lot, lot years. of years, and according to lead researcher David J. Doctor David J. Waters, a professor in the Department of Veterinary Clinical Sciences at the Purdue University, he said, like women, female dogs in our study had a distinct survival dis uh, sorry had a distinct survival advantage over fe over males. Gosh, I'm getting my words right. But taking away ovaries during the first four years of life completely erased the female survival advantage. Survival, mm. they mean longevity. That's what they mean. We found that female Rottweilers that kept their ovaries for at least six years were four times more likely to reach exceptional longevity compared to females who had the shortest lifetime ovary exposure. Wow. Ooh. Because death from cancer is so prevalent in Rotties, researchers conducted a subgroup analysis of only dogs that did not die of cancer. This focus, this focus res research further proved the strong association between intact ovaries and longevity. Even in dogs that did not die of cancer, the females who kept their ovaries the longest were nine times more likely to achieve exceptional longevity, which is 13 years plus. And yeah, we want our pets to live a long, long life. Simply put, Study results indicate removal of a Rottweiler's ovaries significantly increase the risk for a major lethal disease. And that has to apply to all dogs, not just large dogs either. I am I'm, I'm I'm beginning to think. Now, we talk, as you know, a lot about nutrition and how, how we know good nutrition is going to give them a better chance of a healthy life, disease-free, and some longevity. But I do think this is another factor. And I, it's funny because I have been changing my views also on spay and neuter. I'm going to tell you what they are. We've discussed it on the show before with experts. Yeah, I think that I think in Nevada, I was, you have to do you have to spay and neuter at four months. Bet yeah, before within months. the first year or something like that. Or four months. Wow. To me, that's too young. That's far too young. They have not grown and developed. And now this research is out. It's going to tell us something quite differently. So here we go. Did you know that in Europe, intact dogs are the norm? A more recent study conducted at this uh, at, US, at UC provides additional evidence that spaying or neutering and and the age at which it is done may increase a dog's risk of certain cancers and joint diseases. The U.S. takes a very different approach to spay neuter compared to many European countries. In this country, not only are most dogs spayed or neutered increasingly, the preferred timing of the procedure is before the animal is a year old. In Nevada, it's four months. Too young. The motivation for a de-sexing is pet population control, and owners are considered responsible only if their pet has been sterilized. However, in many European countries, dogs remain intact, and animal health experts do not promote spaying or neutering. The UC Davis study was undertaken according to the researchers because... 
Given the importance of gonadal hormones in growth and development, this cultural contrast invites an analysis of the multiple organ system that may be adversely affected by neutering. And this is what I've been thinking as well, because I think it's I think it's more than I, I think there's it's more than just nutrition that's harming dogs if you've got poor nutrition. In, uh, well, in the whole or the holistic approach to the how their organs function yeah. makes total sense yep. to me. In desect U.S. golden retrievers, the rates of joint disease and cancer are much higher than intact goldens. The researchers looked at the health records of 759 golden retrievers. Goldens were chosen because they're one of the most popular breeds in the U.S. and Europe and are often used as service dogs and are also susceptible to various cancers and joint disorders. The intent of the study was to investigate the effects of neutering on the risks on the risks of several diseases in a single breed of dog, distinguishing between male and females, between dogs that are being neutered or spayed early before one year and late after one year or not at all. The dogs ranged from one to eight years old and had been seen at the UC Davis William R. Pritchard Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital for one of the more following problems. Hip dysplasia, uh, cranial cruciate ligament tear, uh, lymphosarcoma, hemangiosarcoma, and mast cell tumor. The researchers focused on joint disorders and cancers because desexing removes the testes or ovaries and disrupts production of hormones that play an important role in body processes like bone growth plate closure. Study results indicated that all five diseases, the rates were significantly high in both males and females that were neutered and spayed before the, the age of one compared to those intact dogs. A special concern was that results showed a 100% increase in the rate of hip dysplasia in male goldens neutered before 12 months of age. 10% were diagnosed with the condition, which was double uh, the rate of occurrence in intact males. Past studies have reported a 17% increase among all neutered dogs compared to all intact dogs. Mm -hmm. They've been talking about that hip dysplasia thing in those specific breeds that are yes. susceptible to that for a, quite a while. Yeah. Makes total sense. Uh, Vichlers, there's a study on them, suggests a significantly increased risk for cancer and behavioral disorders in spayed or neutered dogs. 2014, this was a study, and it was 2,500 dogs revealed that dogs spayed or neutered at any age were at si significantly increased risk for developing mast cell cancer, lymphoma, other cancers, all cancers combined, and fear of storms. Interesting, compared with intact vichlers. Wow, it's incredible what they learn through research. Dogs of both genders, neutered or spayed, at six months or younger, had significantly increased odds of de developing a behavioral disorder, including separation anxiety, noise phobia, uh, uh, being timid, uh, being very, very excited, submissive urination, aggression, hyperactivity, and or fear biting. So now we can re we can connect this with behavioral stuff too. Wow, so it's not just the physical. When it came to thunder th 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 thunderstorms, th th fear of storms. Yeah, when it came to fear of storms, all neutered or spayed vichlers were at greater risk than intact vichlers regarding of age at neutering. The younger the age at neutering, the earlier the age at diagnosis with these these cancers and these behavioral disorders and the fear of storms. The spayed female vichlers had a nine times higher uh, incidence of hemangiosarcoma compared to intact females. That's, a, that's high. Regardless of when spaying was performed, however, no difference of incidence of this type of cancer was found for neutered versus intact males. See, now, it's n now there's a difference between male and female as well. Neutered and spayed dogs had a 4.3 times higher incidence of lymphoma, regardless of the age at time of neutering, and a five times higher incidence of other types of cancer. The, these, uh, this, this is terrible. It's just terrible. Spayed females had six and a half times higher incidence of all cancers combined compared to those intact females, and neutered males had 3.6 times higher incidence than intact males. Wow. Uh, so this, uh, this is how the research concluded. Additional studies are needed on the biological effects of removing gonadal hormones and on methods to render dogs infertile that do not involve gonadectomy. Mm. Uh, I, I don't like that word, but... I know. In German shepherds, if they're desex before a year, it triples their risk of joint disorders. Wow. Ooh. That's a great article. It's a very good article. I'm just going to sort of skim through this. I will put this up on, 
on our Facebook page, which is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. And this is what Dr. Cowan's preference is, and I, I think this hopefully is going to be the next way that we go, and that is to sterilize and not actually de-sex. Since simply delaying a spay or neuter until a dog is older doesn't address all the health challenges we see in de-sex first intact pets, she says she likes the Vigilist researcher's conclusion above that we need to investigate alternative methods of sterilizing dogs that do not involve removing the ovaries or testes. As she explained in the video, and we'll put that up also, over the years, she has changed her view on spay and neutering dogs, based not just on research studies, but also on the health challenges faced by so many of her canine patients after she had spayed or neutered them. So this is real-life experience as well as research. These were primarily irreversible metabolic diseases that appeared within a few years of the dog having the surgery. These days, she says she works with each individual pet owner to make decisions that will provide the most health benefits for the dog. Whenever possible, I prefer to leave dogs intact. However, this approach requires a highly responsible pet guardian who is fully committed to and capable of preventing the dog from mating, unless the owner is a registered responsible breeder. And she said the goal is to be responsible. Some states don't have a spay neuter law, and I think her state doesn't. Hmm. Although she said, you know, I've, I've, I've listened to in the past where she said, well, be prepared as well, because people will judge you for an intact dog. Be prepared for that. Yeah, people she, are like that. She says her client... They think they're more aggressive sometimes. Well, or, again, those myths come into place, yeah. don't they? Into play. Yeah. She says, my clients are incredibly responsible and, and educated, which I believe they would be. Trust me, I, I would love to have her as my veterinarian. Um, I've never had a single unplanned pregnancy in my veterinary, veterinary career, but I realize I'm not providing medical care to the entire world, and the world is full of irresponsible people. My second choice is to sterilize without desexing. This means performing a procedure that will prevent pregnancy while sparing the testes or ovaries so they continue to produce hormones essential for a dog's health. This can be done at any age and could easily replace the current standard of desexing by high-volume spay-neuter clinics and shelters around the country. This typically involves a vasectomy for male dogs and a modified spade for the females. A modified spay removes the uterus while preserving the hormone-producing ovaries. This procedure is less invasive, I like that, requires shorter time under anesthesia, I love that, and yields the same results with no negative side effects. Oh, I'm all for this. And this is how I've been thinking the last couple of years with a lot of the research that I've been reading, following these experts, and seeing and questioning why are our pets getting all these cancers? Why are they having hip problems? All of these kind of things, uh, there's, and there's a reason for absolutely everything. There's a reason for everything. And I say it's, it's beyond just nutritional, and nutrition is a very big part of having a healthy pet. So she talks about the problem of homeless pets. And what do you do with pets that are homeless? And she says she wants to em emphasize I'm not advocating the adoption of intact shelter animals to people who may or not be responsible pet parents. Shelter veterinarians don't have the time or resources to build a relationship with every adoptive family. They don't. They don't even see them. They don't even meet them. So the animals they care for must be sterilized prior to adoption to prevent more litters of unwanted pets. She said, I would certainly prefer that shelter vets sterilize rather than spay new to homeless pets to preserve their sex hormones. However, currently the U.S. shelter system can't accommodate alternative sterilization procedures, nor are veterinarians in this country routinely trained in how to perform anything other than spays and neuters. So while she says, I totally agree with the need to sterilize shelter pets, I don't necessarily agree with the method of sterilization being used. I thought this was a very, very interesting article. If we, c I, I'm, I'm a big proponent for whatever you can do for your pet to increase the quality of their life and the longevity of their life, then we should start adopting these things. Well, and people should start by asking their vets, hey, how long can I wait and can I sterilize versus yeah. spay or neuter? Yeah. And, and, you know, I guess you have to work with your local laws, yes. uh, understand them or change them or try to, try to you know, uh, submit a bill to change or amend it. Um, but, yeah, you need to ask your vet, hey, look, uh, I want to do this at the last possible minute if the law requires me to do it, but I don't want to do this method. I want to do this method. Can we do it? And yeah. if not, maybe you need to look for it. You know, we, we've spoken many times, hey, I have no problem with firing a vet. 
Oh, gosh, no. Or a doctor or anybody for that. Find who works for you, who listens to you, who's interested in something you've read online or you've 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 watched a video and question we do have a, a veterinarian who is for us the perfect veterinarian because she likes when we have questions and we've been reading i've often thought to myself and you you'll, you'll hear this too we all talk about nutrition and good nutrition and someone will say yeah well my friend fed, fed their dog the worst food you can imagine its whole life and it lived to be 18 hmm was that dog fixed how was it fixed but is that a factor as well? So I think anything that we can do that just improves, like I say, the quality and the longevity of their life is definitely worth looking into. I hope it would be the next trend, and I hope that veterinarians do get the training for this so they can offer that as an alternative, much like offering a tighter test as opposed to over-vaccinating. I'm all for that. I was very excited to re- read that article. I will pop this up on on our Facebook page, which is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Well, Jim, we have got to the end of the show, because, but one thing I wanted to talk about, and I don't have time, is probiotics. But I don't have time, because it's a big topic. And a lot of people are interested in probiotics, or they give probiotics, but they're not quite sure what their full full function is for their pets well, maybe we and the types. Maybe we need to make this as a teaser. Uh, for the th- our topic of discussion yep. next week, then yeah, it's a big, it's a I big. I mean, we've been using probiotics for years mm-hmm. ourselves and our dogs, but uh, it's a big topic, and and I think it's good to understand the terminology and the types of probiotics and the types of ways that you can administer probiotics. Very, very interesting topic, but I think we'll save that for next week. It's a, it's a big one. It's a really, really big one. Can you believe how quick the show went today? Very fast. What the heck? <laughs> Very fast. What right. the heck? These two little uh, characters here have settled down. He's no longer. He's laying there next to a squirrel, and they're happy. Thornton checked out. She was tired from the walking. So before she we before we close out, let's just reiterate: the summer temperatures are, are back in in full force. We're going to have a rough rough temperatures here in Vegas. No matter where you are in the world, just make sure that your pets are not out in the heat. The shade is not enough. You'll never provide enough shade and water to keep them cool. Bring them inside. Don't leave them in your cars. Don't walk them on hot pavements. You want to keep them nice and safe and comfortable and happy. and Be a responsible pet parent. Well, if you've liked today's show and you're listening uh, live, you can always share from our uh, directly from wherever you're listening on, whether it's your phone, your iPad, your, your laptop. And if you're listening on one of the podcast apps, then you can just share it directly to your social media. We love a share. We love a share. And uh, it's been a it's been a, an interesting show today, Jim. Lots of information, wouldn't you say? I think it was content rich. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Catios, dogs with contact lenses, the new way to spay and neuter, and the great research coming out about the longevity. What else did we talk about? We talked about a lot of things. The spay neuter. I think that was it. It's been a g- it's been an interesting show. Next week we will cover those probiotics. Again, another good thing you can add into your pet's diet. Well, remember, my friends, you can help an animal in need either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share that information, or ask your veterinarian about a modified spay neuter so that you can keep the endocrine system in place. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt and be kind to all animals. Jim, thank you for being my co-host. You're welcome. Thank you, Thornton, Mr. Twix, Miss Galaxy. Uh, Thank you for being here today, everybody. Take a moment to like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, post your pictures of your pets on our pages because we love to see them. And today you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about our pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets good morning and good night. And I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember... Give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our hosts as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. 
If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist. Joke. <laughs> and you know, today is going to.